Good morning, everyone. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather together today and prepare now to enter into our worship together, let us begin as we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and your blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Like a fire, there appeared the prophet Elijah, whose words were as flaming furnace. Their staff of bread he shattered. In his zeal, he reduced them to straits. By the Lord's word, he shut up the heavens and three times brought down fire. How awesome are you, Elijah, in your wondrous deeds, whose glory is equal to yours. You brought a dead man back to life from the netherworld by the will of the Lord. You sent kings down to destruction and easily broke their power into pieces. You brought down nobles from their beds of sickness. You heard threats at Sinai and forth avenging judgments. You anointed kings who should inflict vengeance and a prophet as your successor. You were taken aloft in a whirlwind of fire, in a chariot with fiery horses. You were destined, it is written, in time to come, to put an end to wrath before the day of the Lord, to turn back the hearts of fathers toward their sons, and to reestablish the tribes of Jacob. Blessed is he who shall, who shall have seen you, and who falls asleep in your friendship. For we live only in our life, but after death, our name will not be such. O Elijah, enveloped in the whirlwind. Then Elisha, filled with a twofold portion of his spirit, wrought many marvels by his mere word. During his lifetime, he feared no one, nor was any man able to intimidate his will. Nothing was beyond his power, Beneath him flesh was brought back into life. In life he performed wonders, and after death, marvelous deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The Lord is king, let the earth rejoice, let the many isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. Rejoice in the Lord, be just. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes round about. His lightnings illuminate the world. The earth sees and trembles. Rejoice in the Lord, be just. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice, and all peoples see his glory. Rejoice, the Lord, be just. All who worship graven things are put to shame, who glory in the things of naught. 
all gods are prostrate before him. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. Jesus said to his disciples, In praying, do not babble like the pagans, who think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This is how you are to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> My dear brothers and sisters, we know that reconciliation was a central part of not only Jesus' public life, teaching, and ministry, but he taught that important notion of reconciliation, not only in word, but in deed, in reconciling many in the time of his life here on earth to the Father, and giving us beautiful examples of how we ourselves are to forgive one another as the Father forgives us, and how we are to be agents of that reconciliation. This is not only monumental in the life and teaching of Jesus, but as he brought this concept even into the Jewish culture of which he lived and moved and breathed and into salvation history, we certainly know that that theme and that spirit of reconciliation was not something new to the Jewish people or their culture. They, we have only to look at the Old Testament to see how many times God reconciled himself to his people corporately, as well as many examples of how even within the community people were called to reconcile with each other. The prophets, for instance, on many occasions called the people uh, to be reconciled to God, to cast away their sinful ways, to indeed convert themselves before it might be quote-unquote too late. Uh, but what we see in the teaching of Jesus that makes this even more profound and very uniquely Christian is that this notion of reconciliation is not so intimately tied to justice as it was in the Old Testament, meaning that one had, out of a just sense, making sure that one was reconciled or not, maybe a better way of saying it, uh, falsely accused or overly or disproportionately uh, punished or treated for something that was done. And Jesus moves this understanding of reconciliation into a complete and absolute reconciliation, a sense of not just justice, but absolute reflection of God's charity, his mercy, and his love. And so, as we see, as the disciples ask Jesus to teach them how to pray, we know very well that he gives them this Our Father. And we've reflected on different occasions here at Mass 
on how scripture scholars will remind us that this prayer the Our Father is so very unique and different from the Jewish traditional prayers that it is a prayer that we can have great certainty uh, came from Jesus himself, as they often say, Sisima Verba, from the very word of Jesus, literally. And we see that at the heart of this prayer that we know as the Our Father is this desire to remind ourselves that we are called to forgive others of their sins and transgressions. And if we do so, the Heavenly Father will forgive our sins. And so Jesus brings this notion that is so fundamental to Christianity to the very heart even of one's prayer life, even to this paradigm of prayer that Jesus gives at the request of the disciples so that they can be in better communion with God through prayer. And what Jesus says is that not only our words in prayer are important as a means of communicating to God and God communicating to us, but that words of prayer should then overflow into our everyday actions so that, so to speak, our actions are also part of that sacred offering of ourselves in a prayerful disposition to God as well. And so, of course, we know that the angel struggle for all of us individually as well as corporately is to embody this uh, in the most perfect way possible. And I think, as we know, the effects of original sin and our own temptations around us, uh, sometimes some of the hardest things we can do uh, are, are examples in which we forgive others and bring reconciliation uh, of our, you know, we might say this, let me work 40 hours at the food bank, but if I really have to reconcile that, re reconcile with that brother-in-law of mine, oh dear gosh, you know, what can I you know, say 20 our fathers and 30 Hail Marys instead of saying I'm sorry to the neighbor, whatever it might be. We know sometimes this is very difficult, and that's why we need God's grace to help us in that. And particularly, we need the strength of the Eucharist. And that is why, if we think about it from a liturgical point of view, in the formulation of the Mass, where does the praying of the Our Father come? The praying of the Our Father actually comes as part of the communion rite. It follows the Eucharistic prayer, and it precedes our receiving of our Lord in Holy Communion. I think if we ponder upon that, it's very powerfully and purposefully situated from antiquity into that part of the Eucharistic liturgy, because after the consecrated species uh, have been changed into the body and blood of Christ, and prior to our reception of it, we offer this paradigm prayer in the heart of the Mass, the beginning of the communion rite, to remind us that in living out what this prayer is asking and what we are asking, we need God's strength in, in, in a um, magnificent way in the Eucharist. And so we pray that prayer prior to the reception of Holy Communion, we receive Holy Communion, and then with the grace of that sacrament, with the help of this prayer, we are called to go forth and embody what the life of Christ means to the world and the reconciliation he's won for us on the cross, which is celebrated in every Mass as that perfect sacrifice. So let us ask the Lord to strengthen us and so many times as we could only venture how many times a day or maybe how many times a year or maybe how many times in our lifetime we pray this prayer. When we do pray it, let us pray it slowly and let us pray it intentionally and let us reflect on the words that are there but also both in the challenge and also in the consolation that God offers to it. Let us continue now. As we turn to Almighty God this day, we are mindful of God's many blessings. So we humbly turn to him now and ask him again to hear our needs and the needs of all the world. Let us pray for the Catholic Church throughout the world, that God will continue to guide us in bringing his word to life. Let us pray to the Lord. For the leaders of nations, may God guide them in upholding human dignity in policy and practice. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are poor, hungry, or thirsty, may God show compassion upon their sufferings and enliven the community to meet their needs. Let us pray to the Lord. For the church gathered today, may God give us courage in leading lives of faithfulness in word and deed. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, so Lord. For the continuation of peace and justice and the end of prejudice throughout our land, the nation, and the world, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For all of our sick, that the Lord may continue to give them strength, and for those who care for them, hope and courage. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For all of our personal intentions, for those needs listed in our parish book of prayer, and for all those we hold in the silence of our hearts and bring today before the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For Frank Nemchik, for whom we offer Mass this morning, and for all of the souls of the faithful departed, that they who have died, especially as members of this community, may now receive God's eternal mercy and everlasting peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. Our Father in heaven, hear these prayers which we offer today, for we make them in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed are you, Lord God of all my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, and that the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and through it be the wellspring of all blessing, and laid open before us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving itself is your gift. Since our praise adds nothing to your greatness but profits us for salvation, through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy Lord, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <coughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your, your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection, resurrection until we come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
The Lord is good to those who hope in him, to the soul that seeks him. Let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Spirit. May almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. It's a great day, everyone. Amen. Amen.